Hey guys, uh, I'm tuning in from my home office as opposed to my usual whiteboard. I'm going to try to run this one a little bit differently. But what we're going to talk uh, today about is how to make that shift, um, whether you're a school leader, whether you're a teacher in the classroom, um, whether you're just hoping to design better learning experiences for kids, um, about how we can connect the real world to the world in school. And so this is going to be a, a bit of a presentation about how to use partners to do that. Um, so we're going to start out with a simple visual like I like to do. And this is uh, demonstrating usually we have school experiences and real world experiences. And oftentimes there is a bridge, uh, sorry, not a bridge, a wall that divides those two things. Uh, there's a wall between school and there's a wall between the real world. Because lots of times us as teachers or educators, we really know the world inside of school. Um, but what about that world outside of school? What does our content look like when kids are doing real things with it as scientists, as mathematicians, um, as engineers, as designers, as historians? And what if we turn that wall into a bridge? How do we connect uh, what's happening in school to what's happening outside of school in learning experiences? And we could do that through really key learning experience partners. So I'm gonna demonstrate what that might look like in a learning experience, and then give you some provocative questions to think about as you think about how to design learning experiences with partners. So let's look at a subject, let's say for example, that science and humanities. Um, you've got two teachers that have gotten together, so you're already doing some collaboration, which is wonderful, which is more than what a lot of schools do. And those science and humanities teachers want to get together and look at a learning experience of alternative food growing systems. Okay, so they're looking a little bit about urban farming. We're trying to address this fact that the world's food is going to be limited if we keep producing at this rate and having kids really explore food production. And so what you're hoping uh, them to do is eventually have some food growing system. But you as a science or humanities teacher might have limited knowledge. You've never uh, grown food yourself. Um, you know a little bit about plants. You know you have some flowers or, or potentially at home. But really, what does it take to actually become an urban farmer? And this is where the power of partnerships comes in. So first, you expose students um, to a farmer. Now, this happened in our school. We had a, a local farmer that was connected to our school because it was a local farm that was right outside of our school. And that just simply started with forming that particular partnership with asking, hey, what can we do to help serve you? And then, then of course, you know that project partner uh, could help serve us. So that uh, person came in and helped the students look at how do you farm? What kind of crops can we grow in this region? What are the different seasons to grow those? We had another project partner that we looked at that was a local um, connection with one of the teachers. One of the teachers knew someone who worked at this NGO, and that whole NGO's purpose was to help people explore different ways of growing food. So we had the farmer looking at big kind of food production, and then you had the person who was more of an urban farming expert. They came in, spoke to our students about different urban farming methods and taught them a little bit, not just about urban farming methods and how to grow um, local types of crops in an urban setting, but also how to kind of put your story together uh, to make a compelling and convincing uh, argument for urban farming. So they did two things. They helped with the humanities portion in helping teach how to put a story together and also the science portion. And then that led to, of course, students doing real world work. These are students producing aquaponics and hydroponic systems. And here's the students um, taking a plot of land right outside of our classroom and turning that into um, a growing uh, bed or a growing system. So those are how project partners help with this learning experience. You take something that you don't know much about, you figure out what do you want students to be able to do, and then where are the gaps and who might be able to help. Um, I'll give you one more example. So this is typically going on right now. Of course, we have COVID, and we have so many problems that are being presented by COVID. So a com computer science teacher got together with the science teacher and said, look, COVID's very science related. There's computer science. What do we want kids to do about this? And so they looked at a learning experience of how do we help slow the spread of COVID? And are there apps somehow that can connect people who might be socially isolated, help might demonstrate where the spread is within their own city? 
Um, maybe the app can help demonstrate uh, safe hygiene practices, whatever. But the computer science knows, teacher knows obviously a little bit about coding. Um, the science teacher knows a little bit about biological sciences, but what are people doing in the real world? And how do we build an app or prototype? That's where then the project partners come in. So this, they reached out to a local hospital to say, hey, can you provide some expertise? So the students um, interviewed some of the local doctors at the hospital just to find out more about COVID. Um, they then thought in terms of um, a particular patient of COVID or somebody who is infected who might be a single mom who can't afford to lose their job, or maybe it's a teenager who feels very socially isolated and their mental health is being affected. So they worked together with IBM. IBM was a project partner and IBM had some um, volunteers who were able to help students with the design, using the design thinking process of an app. Um, and of course there's Partners in Health, which is an NGO, which looks at how can we better um, inform the community about staying safe and being healthy. COVID obviously has been a perfect context for that. Now the students didn't actually create the apps, they just designed what the architecture of the app would look like. So when you're thinking about this, you're like, wow, that's way above you know, my pay grade or way above what my students can do. Think in terms of what's the lowest hanging fruit. In this case, the students went through the whole design thinking process and they designed um, what that app would look like. And then of course the computer science teachers can take that beyond and actually uh, start the app um, design themselves with students. Um, or that's where the project can, can leave off. So that is how you use project partners. Now the big uh, question I wanna ask is where do you find learning experience partners? How do you find these particular people? And I'm gonna give you four different ways to find those. So I'm gonna stop sharing uh, and hello, uh, tuning in again. So four ways that you can find learning experience partners from the easiest to maybe the most tough. First off is look and tap into your parent community. Okay, your parent community are great resources. Uh, put um, an Excel spreadsheet together, find out where all the expertise lies by your parents. Some are probably small business owners, engineers, doctors, physicians, uh, attorneys, um, whatever jobs that they have, they'll be able to help serve as project partners. Uh, number two place to look is local NGOs. Now, sometimes we start projects in school and then we look for partners. But another way to do this is to tap into your local NGOs, um, non-governmental organizations, and look at, well, what are some of their needs, um, some projects they have. Uh, just recently, I connected a school with a project partner who helps uh, create work camps, um, all the way from building uh, toilets uh, for, for those who are needy, um, to help um, looking at, at safe hygiene practices. So, all types of things that you can do with project partners that are from NGOs. So reach out to some of your local NGOs. Um, chances are too that there's are some local government organizations or local government officials, city councils. They're always looking for ways to connect, uh, especially during this election season. Um, what better way to show that they're serving the community than to help partner with schools? Okay, so those are three particular ways in which you can find um, project partners. And um, the fourth way to look for project partners is to reach out to small businesses. A lot of times small businesses um, are, are really looking uh, to, to, to be part of the, the community and they have uh, particular needs uh, that always generate. I'm a small business owner, so I know that myself. So that's a good place to look. Um, so hopefully that uh, video helps you. You think about how to form uh, partnerships and how to link the uh, world in school to the world outside of school through those project partners.